Hey guys, I'm here with a video tonight. Tonight we're going to be talking about my 10 favorite MLB players. And at the end, we're going to, before number one, we're going to give about 10 honorable mentions. So I did a video about oh, a little over a year ago of my 10 favorite MLB teams. Now, before this MLB season starts, probably in March, I'll do another, uh, like an updated version of that because it changes for me a lot. So that'll be nice to see. I might do top... NBA players and I might do top NBA teams like a redo of that one from last year that I did with Jack but anyway like I don't go detailed into sports that's not my channel I once was going in that direction but I didn't like it I didn't like it so um yeah I just do like little sports videos that anyone can enjoy you don't have to be like some huge sports fan so I'll just get right into this month starting at number 10. Number 10 on this list is Steven Strasburg of the Washington Nationals. Strasburg just re-signed with the Nationals this offseason after having won World Series MVP in 2019, shutting down the Astros twice in the World Series. He's always been one of my favorite pitchers. That started back in, I mean, I don't know if I really started liking him way back in 2014, but I love some uh, 2014 film of him from those playoffs. Um... But I do know that I definitely liked them a lot by 2016, at least. And so it's I've enjoyed watching him the last couple of years, 2019. It was so great to see him succeed in the playoffs, even if it was in those Navy jerseys that I don't didn't love. But um, I will continue rooting for him. I don't think I'm going to be as crazy um, high- on being a Nationals fan like I was. I don't know if they'll be in my top three teams anymore. However, Strasburg, I just hope he continues to have a nice career in D.C. He is my favorite pitcher in the MLB, so therefore there will not be any more pitchers on this top ten here. Pitchers are not like the most attractive, like modeling your game after type of players as hitters slash fielders are, but I've been a Strasburg fan. He's my favorite pitcher in the MLB. Coming in at number 9 is Ronald Acuna Jr. of the Atlanta Braves. Now, I'm not going to be rooting for the Braves this year, but I will still wish the best for Acuna, even though it won't, like, really be one of those guys that'll, like, really hurt so much to me if, like, they're struggling, because I don't care about him that much. However, he's so exciting to, he's, like, the most exciting player to play like. Just when I'm out playing wiffle ball, like, that... You could argue that that is, like, my man. He just, I love his bat flips, his excitement, his just swagger. It's 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 a ton of fun. So I do like Ronald Acuna Jr., despite some of the time he doesn't, like, hustle and stuff. I, I'm an Acuna fan for sure. Number eight, the man who does the most carrying that could possibly be done in baseball, and that is Christian Yelich of the Milwaukee Brewers. Like, when I'm watching Brewer games, it's all about, like, Yelich, even though, like, they went on this insane run without him at the end of 2019 with a really easy schedule to make the playoffs without him. But, man, I I um I kind of have a thing for the Brewers. I was up in Milwaukee last summer, and I even liked them before that. So I hope that they can stay relevant here. I'm really not sure. They could have a really good season or a real disappointing one here in 2020, like, I'm really not sure what to expect of this Brewer team, but Christian Yelich, he's fun, he's a good guy, he's fun to watch, and I wish the best for him for sure, hopefully he could continue his dominant run that he's been on over the past year and a half. Number seven, just entering his second year in the MLB, Fernando Tatis Jr. of the San Diego Padres, his rookie season got cut a bit short, he got injured in, in August, and I was really, really it really hurt, like, when he got injured, I was, like, I was so upset. Tatis was so fun to watch, and I will be rooting for the Padres this year. Gonna, They're definitely a team that I think could be pretty good, and I want them to do well as well. They're now a brown team. Their new jerseys are fire. Tatis plays shortstop with so much swag. I'm not even too familiar with his hitting, to be completely honest with you. But I just, from what I've seen, I haven't got to see him play 
too, too much yet in the MLB. But what I've seen, he's going to be my favorite player, one of my favorite players for years to come in this league. Number six from the New York Yankees, the shortstop, Glaber Torres. Ever since he broke in in 2018, I think even before he made his debut, I knew I was going to really like this player, Glaber Torres. Now, I actually... He, I modeled my batting stance off him in baseball in 2019. Uh, I, with like, you know, the, I was about to like do it like you guys could understand, like getting good visual of it. Heck no. But I, it's kind of just like putting your hands a bit high up behind your head and just swinging pretty hard. Glaber has power, by the way. He's, I've always been saying it for a while. Glaber's gonna be a starting all star in 2020. That might be harder now realizing that he's going to be a shortstop, not second base, but I'm still going to go with it. Glaber Torres, your 2020 AL starting shortstop in the All-Star game, and he's on my favorite team, of course, so I really like Glaber Torres. Number five, a man who just left my favorite team but moves to a team that's very relevant to me, and that is Didi Gregorius of the Philadelphia Phillies. He was definitely one of my favorite Yankees during his five-year run, especially 2017 and 2018. Didi, just such a great leader to the team that I liked. He was just one of the great presences in New York over those great, just good, solid, fun. He was like a good player, 2016, 17, 18. Um, so he did, the run in New York didn't finish the way he would have liked, but he's headed to Philly where I'm sure he'll bring great leadership there. And I'm excited I could go watch him play in Philly. Uh, probably, mm, I don't know. Like, I went there last year, but I'll go back while he's there eventually. Like, probably 2021 or something. I don't know. It's not that long of a trip. Only two hours to Philly. They are the closest team to me. So, I'm going to be rooting for the Phillies a bit. And maybe a lot by the end of the season. Like, I kind of have mixed feelings on the Phillies. In 20, um, well, we'll save this for the favorite teams video, but yeah, Didi is definitely one of my favorite players in baseball and has been for quite a few years. He moves teams now, but I don't think that'll affect anything really too much. Number four, a guy who's trying to hang on to his career, that's Robinson Cano of the New York Mets. Cano is one of my favorite Yankees in the three years that I watched the Yankees, two years that I watched the Yankees, and he was still there, 2012 and 13, and, um... When he moved out to Seattle, I didn't really get to watch him play because that's one of those teams that really just hides on you. When you talk about teams that go hiding, you talk about the Mariners, you talk about the even the A's, you talk about the um, Rockies, like Diamondbacks, like these teams you don't hear about much. But Cano came back to the Mets in 2019 and had a okay year, bugged by injuries. But I mean, I really root for Robinson Cano despite his PED use in 2018 he's one of those players like he might be the lefty that I bat the most like like I try and model my stance after in wiffle ball he is so smooth in the field I've liked Robinson Cano for a long time and I'm really hoping that his um he's out of his prime but like I'm hoping that he could still be a solid player here in 2020 for the Mets who I do find myself to root for a lot. Number three on this list, it's Bryce Harper, the Philadelphia Phillies. I hope he, <laughs> I hope Bryce does really well this year. Like Bryce Harper, I root for a lot, man. And I don't even know what was so funny about that, but I, he's probably second most next to Cano, who I bat the most like in wiffle ball out of lefties. And like I said, I'm gonna want, I, 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 I'd like to see the Phillies be a bit relevant, you know? Even though I hate when, like, my friends overhype them, I still think that I want them to be, like, in the playoffs just so they could be relevant because I kind of like them. Um, and Bryce Harper, I feel like I really like Bryce Harper. He gets a lot of hate, um, that kind of lesson. Like, I love how all the... As soon as you hit that walk-off Grand Slam against the Cubs, you would find... A, a bunch of uh, Instagram comments underrated because the whole narrative was that he was overrated and so now he was like underrated because he did have um, not nearly an MVP type or anything but he did have a very solid first year in Philly I'm wondering if he could get back to that um, MVP conversation 
level type of player. Now let's move to our top two favorite players. Number two, it's Aaron Judge of the New York Yankees. This player, I mean, he's such an, a fantastic leader over the last three years for my favorite team. He's their best player. He is so freaking loyal to the team with everything. He's, he's such a competitor, this man. Like, he's so, like, huge and stuff, so I don't, like, model my game after him or anything, but... Oh man, Aaron Judge, he is just amazing. He has a competitive spirit. He's um he's really nice as well. He gave me a fist pump in like 2015 before he came to the majors. And I am s sad that he's already turning 28 in the middle of this year. But dang, we just got to enjoy these prime years of Aaron Judge here in New York. There's quite a few more of them to come three down hopefully he'll stay healthy all of 2020 he did not the last two years I am like so excited because like I have to I root I want his numbers out of any player on the Yankees I like, care about him having good numbers personally the most just because like he's our man okay so I really hope he does the best possible the Yankees do the best possible I am pumped for 2020 in New York highlighted by Aaron Judge on to the honorable mentions. If you have not already, give this video a big thumbs up and comment below who your favorite MLB player is. Now, my honorable mentions here, I'll just read them off. Juan Soto of the Nationals, Chris Bryant of the Cubs, Luis Severino of the Yankees, Starlin Castro of the Nationals, Francisco Lindor of the Indians, Mike Trout of the Angels, Josh Donaldson of the Twins, Nolan Arenado of the Rockies and Jacob DeGrom of the New York Mets now on to number one. Here we go. All right, for my favorite player in the MLB, it is Javier Baez of the Chicago Cubs. He's been my favorite player since 2016. I've stayed loyal to that. I've seen him develop from an average player into a superstar and Baez, or at least an all-star, Baez is going to be remaining my favorite player here. I got to see him in person twice in 2019, once in Chicago, once in Philadelphia, more notably in Chicago. I bought a shirt of him that day I was at the Cubs game, and it was great seeing him in person. I, like, stalk this man on Instagram because he is so cool, like... <laughs> He's, like, my favorite player in baseball, and there's no question about it. Like, I'm glad to say that I have a response if someone asks me my favorite player in MLB, and it's undoubtedly Javier Baez. It has been for a few years now, and I want to see him back in the playoffs. I, I kind of was happy we got to see the Cardinals finally squeak in in 2019, but really more so, I was bummed out that the Cubs, a team who I'd followed closely all year, and Javier Baez, I didn't get to see him play in the playoffs this year. So in 2020, I'm hoping that we do get to see him play in the playoffs. And I will remain a Javier Baez fan. That's a wrap for my top 10 favorite players in the MLB. I'm hoping you enjoyed this video. Again, if you forgot to earlier, give this video a big thumbs up. Subscribe to Never Quinnate for a lot of great content. Twice a week we're going, I think, here in January. And... That's kind of the plan for January, February. We'll see what happens as the year goes on. Hopefully, it won't be any less than that for a while. And I am hyped to make you guys more content. It is going to be a fantastic year on this channel. It's been a pretty solid start. So, again, gave this video a big thumbs up if you forgot the last couple of times I said so. And goodbye, guys. That's all I'm going to say for tonight.